and uh, if needed. This is um, the first slide of my PowerPoint presentation for the high school student. Okay, so normally um, I start with talking about um, just the campaign Safe Soil, which uh, started last year. Uh, and it's a campaign, as I said before, that um, puts a big effort to awaken uh, citizens around the world uh, to the state of soil and um, urge their government to execute the necessary policies to regenerate soil. Uh, obviously, we are talking about, um, we are talking in a school, uh, or we are talking about students, and that's why it's important uh, to not to uh, put um, uh, such a heavy burden on them that, you know, our oh, soil is uh, dying, soil is, um, we are becoming extinct, so it's all, all on your responsibility, it's your responsibility to save soil and save our lives. But um, we talk about the problem uh, and we say we talk about the solution as well. So soil, it is a solution. So uh, everything that I talk about, I stress out that the solution is uh, um, underneath our feet. So obviously we start with the problem. What is the problem? The problem is that the soil is getting extinct. And um, in the next slides, I will analyze, first of all, what soil is and what it means that is going extinct. But um, normally, for, first of all, I use uh, this uh, nice video that has been done by teenager students uh, um, around the world uh, that talk to other students, to, uh, to other teenagers. Uh, and it's a quick short video that gives an overview and uh, this is one what I want to show you as well. So let me know if you hear or if you don't hear it, if you see it, let just let me know. But for our generation, many civilizations have risen and fallen. But for our generation, all of humanity is under threat. We're facing climate change. Every year, there are huge floods and droughts. 800 million people go to bed hungry. 2 billion people are not getting enough nutrition from their food. Two thirds of our wildlife has been lost in the last 50 years. But there is something we can do about this. There's a solution to all these problems. And it's right here under our feet. Healthy soil can be a solution to climate change, floods, droughts, food shortages, loss of wildlife and more. But first, what makes our soil healthy? It's not just earthworms, ants and badgers that live in the soil. Healthy soil is teeming with microscopic life. One teaspoon of soil contains more microorganisms than there are human beings on this planet. Thousands of varieties of nematodes, fungi, bacteria and more. Each one has an important role to play in the ecosystem of our soil. Some of them break down organic matter like dead leaves and animal waste. This provides food for plants and other creatures. Others break down the minerals and particles of sand. This provides plants with the nutrition they need and in turn, the nutrition we need. These little soil creatures are essential to life on this planet. In fact, without all these soil creatures, soil will be just sand. Soil is our life. Food comes from soil, clothes come from soil, and books. But all over the world, our, our soil is dying. One indicator of healthy soil is earthworms. In the UK, three in seven of the fields have low earthworm numbers. That's a lot of unhealthy soil. In fact, in Europe, two thirds of the soil is in an unhealthy condition. Another way of knowing how healthy soil is, is by measuring the amount of organic matter. Here in Italy, it's pretty bad. The soil in Italy has only 1.2% organic matter. For soil to be healthy, it should be at least 3% to 6%. And less than 1% means the soil is essentially a desert. In India, about two-thirds of the soil has less than 0.5% organic matter. Another indicator of soil health is the depth of topsoil. Topsoil is the top of the soil, where most of the life is. Here in the US, we have lost 50% of our topsoil. Another indicator of soil health is desertification. That means 
when land has become a desert. In Africa, 45% of the land is desertified. And the UN estimates that by 2030, we will lose two thirds of the land we grow crops on. It doesn't take a genius to realize that if our soil is unhealthy, our food quality reduces too. For example, if I want to get as much nutrition as this plate of salad would have provided 100 years ago, now I'd have to eat all of this. I can't eat that much. And this isn't just about food quality, it's about food quantity. Unhealthy soil means less food for everybody and less reliable harvests. This is about climate change. Healthy soil is a huge carbon sink. A carbon sink means something that takes in carbon and stores it for a long time. That's helpful because it means that the carbon is in the soil instead of in our atmosphere as carbon dioxide which you probably already know is a big contributor to climate change our soil actually stores three times more carbon than is in the atmosphere but unhealthy soil loses carbon it contributes to climate change instead of being the solution and unhealthy soil doesn't store water. So when it rains, the water doesn't soak into the ground and we get floods. And once the flood is over, we get droughts. This is about our future. By 2050, UN agencies say 90% of the Earth's soils could be degraded. Unless we act now. Because we can turn this around. It's possible to bring our soil back to health if we take care of it. We can do our farming in ways that make our soil healthier by getting more organic matter into the ground and creating conditions where the soil life can thrive. We can make soil into a solution where our soil is able to store water so that we don't get floods and droughts, where our soil helps us reduce climate change emissions instead of being a cause of it, where our soil supports our wildlife to thrive. We need to make sure it happens. And that means making sure everybody knows. Because we are not government officials, politicians or farmers. But we do have a voice. If everyone knows how important soil is. If everyone knows that we can't go on treating it like dirt. If everyone knows we need to take care of our soil. Then change will happen. This is our future. And soil is our solution. Let's make art about soil. Write a poem about soil. We can also write letters to our elected leaders. We can use our voices and creativity to bring soil to the top of the world's agenda. Let's make it happen! Okay, so this was uh, the video as you've seen in the last uh, few images, uh, then you could see that there is also a global exhibition of art, poetry and more. And uh, this is uh, something that is still going on and I will show you at the end of the presentation, I will show you all the resources and website that you can use also in your school. Okay, so let's see how... Um, how um, careful you were to listen to this presentation. <laughs> what is soil? Is it minerals and rock dust, clay, sand and or a uh, sand and organic matter? Which one of the three is it? Just uh, write it in the chat box. Then someone can tell me the answers because I don't see. Is there a chat box? Yes. Option three. Yes. I don't see the answers, but yes, of course, uh, uh, soil is sand and organic matter. Soil is the foundation of almost all life on this planet, as we said before. It's a complex symbiotic system of organic matters, but also minerals like ions, the potassium, sodium, gases like oxygen, carbon dioxide, liquids, water, and living organisms that together support life. So let's have a look um, a better look to this, okay? So in this image you have on the left, this is soil, agricultural farm, farmland, and on the right you have sand, which is almost a desert. 
the difference between sand and soil is the presence of organic material, also known as organic matter. Obviously, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be more complex than this, but I will make it easier today. So organic material is made of um, dead plants and dead animals and also animal waste. So leaves and woods, animal waste, dead animals, but also microorganisms. Uh, okay. So the presence of organic matter in the soils helps have a very big function to help store water in the soil and promotes activity of uh, soil microorganisms and earthworms. The organic matter also in the soil regulates the soil pH, the temperature and aeration. So the presence of soil is essential for, for life. Uh, obviously, organic matter gives us uh, food which is rich in minerals and vitamins. The richer um, the more um, organic matter there is, the, the, this means that the more food there is uh, for all the living organisms in the soil. And this produces uh, uh, plants, so fruits and vegetables and crops uh, that are rich in minerals and vitamins. Without soils, obviously, plant cannot grow. Mm. Let's make an example of the amount of organic content that there is uh, in the rainforest. We're talking about 70% of organic matter uh, but in you normally in farmland uh, we have much less to grow vegetables and fruits and grains that are healthy we need three to six percent of organic content three is three percent is the minimum of organic content but the, this is an ideal world because in reality uh, 60 to 70 percent of our farmlands contain less than 3% of organic content. And this, uh, as you can imagine, may lead to soil extinction and desertification and degradation. Uh, for example, in India, and this, these are um, data that um, uh, the FAO and the UN provide, in India there is 62% of agricultural land is with less than 0.5% of organic content. And you can imagine this may lead to starvation, but also a big problem of, of farmers' suicides as well. In Europe, 80% of agricultural land has less than 2% of organic content. And as you watched in the video, in Italy, we have an average of 1.2% of organic content. And in the United States, already 50% of the topsoil is gone. Uh, and there is, uh, I will show you at the end, uh, a link to a movie which is called uh, Kiss the Ground uh, and it's on Netflix uh, and it's some, a movie that I showed to my students as well and it explains what happened in the United States and it's very important to know. So why are the world's soils degraded? Again, I'm talking about agricultural soil. Um, I'm not talking about consumption of soil or uh, you know, pollution of soil specifically, but we're talking about uh, uh, aggressive practices that intensive farming has on soil. Such as in this picture, you can see uh, these very heavy tractors uh, um, compact the soil because of their weight, but they also expose uh, all these uh, living microorganisms uh, in the, at the sun. So it's like, you know, um, peeling off uh, the skin of the soil and leaving the body exposed to the sun. This is, uh, this is something that obviously doesn't sustain life. And therefore, that's why uh, it's important in intensive agriculture, intensive farming, to add uh, fertilizers and pesticides to prevent, uh, um, to prevent the growth of diseases. And this obviously, you know, doesn't uh, allow the development of a healthy ecosystem. Uh, but the contrary, this is uh, this type of uh, agriculture brings uh, to desertification and to the loss of organic content. Obviously, the loss of soil causes many problems, uh, one of which we've already seen, unhealthy food. Uh, so mm, a poor soil brings to food with less minerals and vitamins. And this means that uh, our health also is compromised because 
compromised because uh, uh, the immune system uh, uh, relates to uh, the presence of vitamins and minerals in our diet. And obviously, uh, there's not enough food uh, for everybody. So the production of, soy of food is less in quantity, but also less uh, in uh, quality. And there are lots of uh, um, data about this, that there is a lack, let me go back for a second, there is a lack of um, potassium, sodium, vitamin C, vitamin E uh, in our diet caused the lack of these uh, uh, substances in the food that we eat. So the same, we should eat much more salad, the fruits and vegetables to have the same amount of vitamins and minerals that we used to eat uh, uh, in the 1920s. And this is because of depletion of soil. So a question for you, um, how much of percentage of our food do you think comes from the top soil? 95%, 79 or 88? Alessandro, just let me know what the majority of people said. 95%, yes, you are well prepared, 95%. Uh, healthy soil leads to healthy food production, as we said, is the foundation for agriculture and the medium in which nearly all food produced in plants grow. So except for all the, the, the fish and all, you know, the marine-based food, then majority of food comes from soil. Another question, what is the percentage of life, so terrestrial life that depends on soil? What do you think? 87, 99, or 43? 99, no, 87, 87% of life on earth depends on soil. But the incredible thing is here that one teaspoon of soil contains more living organisms than there are people on the planet. So obviously we are talking about microorganisms, fungi and bacteria that are not visible. And it's incredible to think and to know that uh, mm, uh, we know more about the universe, the stars and the universe that uh, we are able than, than we know about the species that live underneath our feet. This is uh, something uh, that is quite shocking, but it's like this. The loss of soils causes also the extinction then of animal and plants that depend on the soil. As we said before, we are observed, we are looking at this uh, six mass extinction of animals and plants. And uh, this is well related to the depletion and degradation of soil. So now have a look, let's have a look at what are all these creatures that live in the soil. Um, so we are, again, we are talking about topsoil, so the 20, 30 centimeters of topsoil. And that's where lives thrive. One gram of soil contains 50,000 species of microorganisms, many of which we still haven't identified. One spoon of soil, as I said before, contains more living organisms than the humans in the planet. So one activity that can be done in school if you are also a microscope and if you have a bit of identification skills, it's to identify these living organisms that there are in the soil. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is the earthworm, is really the king of the soil. It, it makes humus uh, by, because it is a decomposer, which means that transform orga organic matter into inorganic matter. So they decompose the dead plants and dead animals into inorganic substances that can um, dissolve in the soil and that can be absorbed by the plants. But also earthworms have another function. Um, they have many functions really, but another one is to, they're able to create paths in the soil because they leave these wormholes. So they make these galleries in the soil that allow the plant roots to grow. And not only this, but these wormholes, uh, they behave a bit like lungs for the soil because they allow uh, air and oxygen to enter in the soil. And by doing this, uh, they produce energy. They allow cellular respiration, which is a chemical process that releases energy. So without organic matter though, 
earthworm basically earthworms literally starve to death so that's why it's important to leave uh, organic matter in the uh, ground in order for these animals to feed and to survive and to do their functions then there are fungi and bacteria so let's have a look at this uh, plants have a limitation so the roots of the plants have only a limited capability to absorb water and minerals from the soil. And why is that? Because the roots are thick and so they can only reach this macro pores, so large spaces in the soils. But the problem is that the majority of nutrients, minerals and ions and um, other substances are in the micro pores, so in the smaller spaces. Also, their roots are quite short, so they can only reach a limited area of soil. So how did they solve this problem? With the symbiosis with the fungi and bacteria, especially fungi. So basically, plants work together with fungi in order to absorb these minerals that are far from their reach out. How do they do this? So the plant exchange sugars, the glucose that they have made, through photosynthesis in exchange of substances like phosphorus, nitrogen, sodium, all these substances, magnesium, that are really important for the growth of the plant. How do they do this? They do it thanks to the thin and long hyphae of the fungi. Now, this is a, a, a nasty word. Hyphae means uh, uh, a long filament like roots so these are basically the roots of the fungi uh, but they are much thinner and much smaller and they are much longer and these are filaments that they can reach the micropores uh, of uh, the soil so basically in they absorb uh, these minerals uh, far away from the plant even uh, sometimes one kilometer away from the plant and then bring it back to the plant in exchange of these sugars of this glucose that the plant has made this is a symbiosis symbiosis that is very important in order for the plant to grow when you go inside um, a woodland and you walk around the trees the, it, it's uh, probably there is only one fungus uh, um, organism that has this massive ivy filaments that go everywhere in the bush and then there are bacteria, of course. Now, there are many, many different functions of bacteria because there are many types of bacteria. Now I'm talking only, for example, about one function of bacteria, which is the protective function. These bacteria, obviously, these are the good guys. I'm not talking about uh, the bacteria that cause diseases. So these are the good guys that form a protective layer around the tip of the root this is the tip of the root which is very big and they make this kind of film that protects the roots from uh, pathogens so from bacteria that cause diseases it's actually very interesting to know uh, there are many studies about this that the types of bacteria or of species of bacteria that we find in the soil we also find them in our guts in our intestines so the microbi microbial life of the soil is similar to the microbial life in our gut and this is obviously important because if we eat food that comes from a healthy soil that means that we have also um, a, um, good bacteria in our guts and we obviously are less fragile less sensitive, sensitive to diseases and that's also why it's important, and I always say it also to my students, that when you are in a healthy environment, that, that you touch the soil, that you play with the insects, that you, you take the, also the earthworm and then put it back, of course, so that you are in contact with the soil and with the healthy population of the bacteria. I always say, obviously, you don't do this in the parks of Rome, where... <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not very clean. Then, of course, there are other animals <coughs> in the soil. And this is the macrofauna, so the fauna that is visible, rabbits, moles, mice, insects. And 
and I show them this video. Let's see if I can show this to you as well, just to break a little bit the presentation. Okay, so as you can see, FAO has a lot of resources. Um, they make a lot of videos that are really nice and short. So I suggest you to go on this page to have a look. And uh, now that we talk about biodiversity and how life depends on soil, let's talk a little bit about water. Then we will talk about carbon dioxide and carbon, and then it's over. So just bear with me. So, Another important function that soil has is to store water. A healthy store stores, a healthy soil stores water. Uh, why? Because it has been shown with a lot of data, there are a lot of data that show that an increase in um, soil organic matter leads to an increase in soil porosity. So there are many pores, many more pores, because uh, the soil aggregates thanks to the living organisms. And this basically serves as a storage volume for water in the soil. It's like, uh, it becomes like a sponge, basically. Uh, obviously, uh, then water is also then available for the plants and the microbes uh, that live there. So this is also beneficial for, for them uh, and for us, because this uh, healthy soil protects us from drought, floods, and erosion. And about this, um, erosions uh, i have um, two activities that i want to propose you one is uh, this i will just show you without um without the audio but um, um just a second this is an activity that, I, that I've done with, um, with especially with the primary school um, kids, but uh, also do, uh, with high school kids. So in this case, we have uh, this um, three bottles where we put different types uh, of soil. Uh, the first one is covered with the grass. In this one, we only put dead leaves. Uh, and this one should be like a sandy, or like a muddy type of soil, okay? So without any organic matter. What is shown here after a while, if we pour the same amount of water in the three bottles, so basically we, we do like if it was a rainfall, okay? So when it rains, obviously uh, um, this soil that has, it's been degraded with no life, uh, uh, is not able to retain water because it's not uh, porous enough, okay? So the water starts to flow away and taking all also all the nutrients, all the minerals that uh, this soil could have had. In the end, the water that you can see here, it's a lot, it's a lot and also it's, uh, it's dirty because it has uh, all the components of the soil. This is uh, 
quite a big erosion. Okay. Then uh, in the middle one, we have a middle situation means that at the end, there is a bit of erosion. Okay. There's a bit of erosion, but the quantity of water that has been uh, leached away, it's a bit less, less than compared to this, the first one. And lastly, lastly, we have, uh, when we have a cover crop, uh, a vegetation covering the, the soil, the roots are able to absorb the water and to create uh, the soil, uh, to make the soil as a sponge. So in the end, the water will be much more clearer here and you you would see if you use the same amount of water for the three bottles in uh, the first case uh, you will have much more less water um, that has been lost by the soil because it has been absorbed uh, obviously by the roots and the soil itself okay so it's clean uh, purified and less water has been lost and this is a nice thing that you can do with uh, with students uh, in the class obviously you don't you cannot do it many times uh, like if you pour water again here after you've done it once uh, then the capacity ability of the water to absorb is less uh, but it's still fun and nice for them to see this okay i hope you're all still there and then question how much do you think is the percentage of water that is stored in the soil as fresh water 90 65 or 51 65 yes 65 <laughs> 65% um, it's stored as fresh water in the soil. Soil, but of this just 65, then 90% of this water is needed for agriculture. Okay, so all the water that we take for agriculture, basically it comes from this reservoir of soil. And lastly, least but not, uh, last but not least, really, we have to say this, uh, uh, healthy soil stores carbon. How does it do this? Uh, obviously, thanks uh, in order to do photosynthesis, plants absorb the carbon dioxide through the leaves and they transform it in glucose. And this is the photosynthesis. But um, what do they do once they've done this uh, glucose they use it they store it and then they send it also to the roots as we saw before this glucose is also exchanged with the fungi that live around the roots okay and even for kilometers away this car this carbon can be sent away far from the plants um, and basically, this means that they are able to uh, mitigate the uh, effect of climate change and the greenhouse effect as well, because they remove these greenhouses, uh, greenhouse gases uh, that like uh, carbon dioxide. So to have a, a healthy soil, we would um, we would have a big effect also on the mitigation of global warming. And do you know how much uh, carbon is stored in the soil by in the soil compared to the living plants? I mean, this carbon dioxide is absorbed by plants and used by plants, but then it goes also in the soil. Carbon, carbon stored in the soil is, uh, someone says, three times more than living plants. Three, yes. This is three, three times more. We need soil rich and organic content that supports plant life in order for the excessive carbon emission from the past century to be sequestered. This is important. If the soil is healthy, then this function works fine. Okay, so the soil is able to store a lot of carbon and this can remove all the carbon emission that we last, that we emitted in the past century. But at the contrary, if the soil is not healthy or if we use these um, aggressive practices of intensive farming rather than 
then store it, the carbon dioxide is released back into the atmosphere. And it has been estimated that the world's degraded soil could release 850 billion tons of carbon dioxide. Really, this, uh, this is more than uh, all of uh, humanity's emission in the past 30 years. It's really a lot of carbon dioxide, and this would obviously uh, increase the global warming and deteriorate even more the, uh, our climate change situation. So what, what do we have to do? Uh, again, um, we can, as the humanity, we can, what we can do to preserve and regenerate the soil is just to bring the land under trees shade or under cover crop, uh, under any type of vegetation. It can be also just grass or, uh, you know, not only they have to be trees, but uh, maybe shrubs, uh, grass, uh, Okay, so any vegetation would cover and give increase the organic content in the soil. And this obviously would maintain and develop a healthy ecosystem. So to do in order to do this, every in each one of us should do something, obviously, at each level, as a personal level, but also collective level, we need to we need to do something, even if it's a little thing, it's important to do something. And in the schools, of course, we can work all together to do this. First of all, is to raise awareness. So let's talk about soil, let's talk about what it is and all this amazing function that the soil has to support life. And um, uh, what can we do as school teachers to just to promote the creativity of kids, uh, so uh, sing, dance, write, why not, write a poem, a story, make a painting, but also a science project, but there have been kids that also have written letters to politicians and ministries to talk about our soil, to ask for protection for soil, to do something, okay, or also to talk about it in, uh, in their families, uh, between their, them, their friends, uh, okay. They've done videos, they've done presentations, the, the kids have done really a lot of uh, um, materials that are available. You can see them in this, um, I, will show, I will show it to you. This is the last um, slide of my presentation. Okay, normally here I talk a little bit about what they can do. And what they can do, it's here. Let me show you again. The website is here. So in this slide, I put all the activities and resources, not all, but the main ones, because really there is a lot of things on the web. And some things, um, some presentation I made also with, uh, with my uh, school team, okay, but many of them are also available from university and other schools. So this last exhibition, Safe Soil, this is the website uh, that uh, contains this permanent uh, exhibition of art, poetry and more. And here you are always uh, um, free to add in the gallery, add exhibits, uh, so to add your materials, uh, whatever has been done in your schools uh, in order to uh, raise awareness. Then if you have also social media, then you can tweet, share on Instagram or on Facebook just by using these uh, uh, tags, exhibit safe soil or safe soil. And uh, if you want to have uh, also an idea of what has been done, then you just uh, scroll and you look at all the, all, the, all the things that have been done, really nice. And uh, here I want just to point out that there are also a lot of videos and um, a lot of resources like lesson resources also available here okay so and you can see that there are also different age groups uh, 3 11 7 16 okay there are also bingo games uh, there are songs uh, there are really many information that you can use quizzes uh, but anything will do anyway, because also the kids are very sensitive. Uh, if they if they just see one thing, then they are the, the stimulus is enough. So you don't have to show them everything; just one thing it will be enough. And then let's have a look at, again uh, at the at these activities um, that you can also do. 
School gardening, that's also always very good if you are in a primary school, especially. Uh, this is a mini wormery that you can do, a mini wormery. So it's a, basically you just put soil and organic matter and you find uh, 10, 12 uh, earthworms and they can observe the way they leaf and create the humus. And here you can see all the, um, the steps, the procedure in order to do this. Uh, you can do, of course, the compost. I just want to jump for a second that one. The compost, it's always a nice activity to do with kids. And here there are all the information uh, and the procedures that you can uh, use uh, in order to do compost, something that is easy to do. And you can keep it also in the classes so that they can uh, um, analyze and observe uh, how fast is the degradation. Uh, maybe you can compare also different types of soils because obviously the degradation will be faster, the decomposition will be faster in a soil which is rich with life rather than a soil that has been um, degraded. Then uh, there is a uh, soil creature field guide. This is also if you have a garden, uh, then you can take some soil sample and then you can start to identify all the uh, living organisms that you found. Uh, obviously, there will be insects, uh, ants, and uh, also cicades, earwig. Well, there will be a lot of them, beetles. And then there will be also arachnids, like so spiders, uh, there will be mites, uh, there will be um, quite pseudoscorpio maybe. <laughs> so there will be quite a lot of uh, living organisms, uh, centipede, millipede, and they will also start to observe the difference between, uh, between all of them. Nematodes, slug and snail, et cetera, et cetera. Um, more resources, yes, just one, I want just to show you these uh, resources. Uh, uh, this is a website, a uh, Canadian website that has been working uh, about soil as well. And here again, you have resources uh, for teachers. This is more for high school teachers, I would say. Um, but there is stuff also for primary and middle school. And you have all the lesson plans and um, ideas for other activities. Another website, so it's for teachers uh, with a lot of um, resources as well. You can just do the lesson activities here and search uh, according to the grade. And these two are in Italian. Uh, just show you this one, Resoil Foundation. They are mainly in Italian. Uh, the activities, uh, you have a kit, uh, um, resources for teachers here, but these ones are all in Italian. But uh, if I know there are some Italians, so if you want to have a look, you can, uh, uh, these are really nice ones. But the website is also in English, but it doesn't have activities in, in English. Then of course there is FAO, with, and this is also the portal is really well done. And uh, this is nice also, you know, for what? Because sometimes there are contests, contests about soil. Um, as you know, I don't know if you know, but uh, on the 5th of December each year, the, it's the Soil International Day. So you can use this, um, and normally there are contests uh, that uh, all, the, all the schools participate in at, and um, you can see them here. So World Soil Day 2021, there has been already 2022, but I don't know why it's not here. Maybe the results are not yet out, but uh, again, uh, this is a nice way to get involved uh, also for, you know, um, citizenship for the um, global citizenship is also a, a good occasion uh, to do something with other schools as well. And um, let me see what else I put. Uh, ConsciousPlanet.org, this is still the campaign that I was talking about, about Safe Soil. Uh, 
this is translated in all the languages uh, so you can choose here your your languages and there are again lots of resources uh, that you can uh, use uh, in um, in your school uh, just a second this is kiss the ground this is the movie i put the link of the movie uh, this is more for you than for because uh, this is a long documentary and my high school students watch it but they are they struggle a little bit there is also a shorter version uh, but um, you have to apply for it after. but it's a good movie to watch so that you understand what you're talking about and you know, to educate yourself this is uh, a good start i would say um Okay, last thing, well, this is the last uh, uh, slide for you. I just want to show you, so we, um, there are two more things that you can do, soil and water activity. Uh, in this one, this is good for the primary school. Uh, so I've done it and it was really fun. So you can just compare two types of soil, uh, the sandy soil, and this is this represents a healthy soil which has aggregated and porous soil. And if you uh, pour water, so if you pretend this is rainfall, you will see that uh, on the flower that is only sand, it doesn't have any organic content, the water is not absorbed. While in the, in the soil, a healthy soil, the water is absorbed. So you can do this just to let them understand what it means to have a porous uh, reach of organic content soil. This is a, a, a bread that has a yeast in it, so it contains living organisms. This is a, a soil that is dead, degraded, and uh, doesn't have any organic content. So you can just compare the two types of soil and it's fun to do with the kids and um and this is another experiment that we've done um we just took two different pots two pots and we placed two different types of soil sand and um, fertile soil and we just planted some uh, uh, seeds to see if they sprouted and this is a nice thing to do. You leave it in the classroom and they observe that slowly in, uh, in the healthy soil, there are a lot of uh, plants coming out while nothing or maybe one or two can uh, sprout uh, here in the sand because maybe there are some minerals, uh, some nutrients, but they will see the, the difference and they will understand the difference. And they can also use the data for, you know, scientific observation. And, and that's it and that's it i've shown uh, basically uh, all the resources and uh, everything that i used uh, in my uh, during my um, my school uh, last year so uh, here now we have time for questions i think let me just come back to you Thank you, Nina. You're welcome. Yeah, it was very interesting. And uh, I don't know if, if teachers have uh, some questions, but I want to remember that the soil educational part was done by Nina. So thank you again. Welcome. Well done, Nina. Thank you. Bravo. But yeah, if you have um, curiosities or also if you want to know something about uh, how the lessons go with the students or if you are if you feel comfortable to do a lesson about soil how would you feel i cannot answer because i'm not a teacher Yes, I think we could do some experiences with the kind of materials. Of course, we are not a science teacher, so we are not so inside the matter, but just with some experiences, just to raise awareness about some little things that students can do to raise awareness about the, the matter of climate change and the, uh, I mean, on, on, on a larger um, extension, um, how to 
to get into this kind of problem, it could it could be okay. I mean, not on the scientific yes, side. There are a lot of other teachers, uh, art, uh, art and uh, music teachers, they've done, uh, you know, anything. Because as I said, uh, it's, uh, it's an open exhibition, that one, and it's just a way to stimulate their thoughts anyhow, not only uh, in a scientific way. Yeah. Okay. So it was really interesting. Thank you a lot, Nina. No problem. My pleasure. So if I may add something, as Michaela said, um, we are not teachers, of course. But, um, for example, I didn't know much about uh, soil degradation uh, nowadays. And thanks to the, uh, our collaboration with the Safe Soil Movement, I actually uh, learned something. Uh, Apart, like, apart from your presentation today, but actually, yeah, the, the, the fact that sustainability also encompasses the fact that soil is where we get most of our uh, nourishment, in basic, basically, and uh, we, we talk a lot about the, the emissions, maybe the global, the global warming and uh, rising temperatures, which are melting the ice and rising ocean levels. And, and everything, but we don't really talk about uh, slow being, being impoverished, uh, apart maybe from some time when we uh, maybe we don't know, for example, in Italy. Uh, yeah, so, uh, region here and uh, Puglia is very uh, it's a uh, high risk of desertification and we cannot really imagine that we can have a desert also here in, uh, in our in our country so it is uh, it was very nice and very useful actually and helpful to to know uh, and to learn more about soil degradation and how we can preserve health soil health but, and I have a question, I don't know if you can answer this, but I was thinking while you were presenting uh, the fact that soil without organic matter is just sand and it doesn't uh, support life in any way. And I was thinking uh, with all the uh, agricultural and uh, far, not farming, but um, I don't know how to say it in English. It's, it's yeah, not coming farming, to me right now. Farming. Yeah, with okay. farming. Uh, we produce a lot of bioproducts uh, from farming and uh, from agriculture. Cannot we use that as uh, to to add into soil to to add organic matter? Because as you said, it's it's way more uh, it's way more often that we use uh, artificial fertilizers mm -hmm. than uh, manure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. That's why um, organic farming or regenerative farming. This is already a procedure that has been used uh, for ages. Obviously, the, um, the productivity is a bit less. So that's why the incentives from governments should be at the beginning very high. And that's why it takes so long to convert uh, a farm and a conventional farm to a biological, organic or a permacultural farm. I mean, there are many different ways you can, that's why I didn't mention uh, you know, organic farming at all, actually. The important thing is that because each soil is different, uh, each land is different, each farmer is different, but the important thing is that we have just one focus, uh, uh, increase the amount of organic matter somehow. So obviously with the manure, and even if we just give back to the soil what we're taking that maybe is not eaten, you know, you just get it back which is called, in Italian, it's called pacciamatura, but I don't know in English, to be honest. But you just cover back the soil with something that you've taken out, then you have to put back something that should be natural. Yes, definitely. And it's, it's incredible how soil would represent a solution, but nobody really is focusing on that. And um, obviously there are many interests, interests, economical interests, and, uh, you know, not only failed, 
soil is degraded, but the soil is consumed, it's covered with tarmac and uh, roads. So uh, uh, we, we need to be aware, and these kids and the students need to be aware that if they, when they will grow up, then they need to have this in their minds, because uh, otherwise it's impossible to reverse the trend. And still we are in a good, um, we are, we st there's still time really. It's interesting to see that now it's the time that we can do something, but not in 13, 40 years. So that's why, you know, I'm happy to be here and to talk about it, that, um, for, to as much as many people as possible, because, uh, and I hope you can do the same, you know, just to spread the word, not only to students, but just uh, uh, with, with, with other people, just we need to be aware. Thank you, Nina. And um, linked to this question, uh, to my previous question, there's also this one. Um, and the last part of your presentation, uh, you you showed us uh, how we can get involved as individuals, but also as schools or classes. And uh, it, I thought I found very very interesting. Um, the initiatives of, you know, writing to your uh, local authorities or, you know, mayor, Sindak, or anyone in your in, in your country. Um, uh, did you do anything uh, of this kind of engagement activities with your own class, like writing a letter to the Ministry of Agriculture or something? Like yes, yes, we did actually. That's uh, always in the Save Soil page. Um, there is a page for students. There are um, three uh, written letters. This is just a model if you don't want to write your own letter. And uh, but this is a model that you can use uh, with the email addresses or with the addresses uh, of um, politicians or authorities you can uh, send it to. And this is done for every country. So if you go and look for it, this is uh, you can uh, look for your own country and do the, do the same. And uh, we don't. We also participated in. Um, basically, there was this Swiss girl, nine years old girl that uh, last 5th of December, which was the World Soil Day, uh, went to the um, Ministry of uh, Agri um, Environment in Switzerland. She's a Swiss girl and uh, she brought, she wanted to brought these thousands um, handprint of uh, children just to ask, uh, just to show, you know, kids are here, kids know that there is a problem, uh, kids are asking. Uh, to protect our soil and she went she took an appointment and she brought these uh, thousands uh, handprints and we also participated we, we sent our handprints so there are a lot of things going on obviously you need to be you want you have to be uh, wanting to be involved um, because uh, if you want there are a lot of things going on and, uh, yes we, we we did that i think there is a question from jackie Yes, no, what I wanted to say, um, well done, Nina, again. I think the one, one of the most amazing things that you get out of all of this is how cheap it is. I mean, none of these activities that you, you can do in school or wherever cost money, really, because if you take two handfuls of any kind of soil and sprout them, it'll, it won't even cost you a euro. So. The, the, the best part of all this is, is that you don't need anything. You just need to want to do it and have a little imagination. And I did, my, my video was off, sorry. And my video was off, sorry. So that's the, that's the best part of the whole, this whole thing is that it just doesn't take anything. It just takes wanting to do it and time. And there you go. Yeah, no, time is always a problem with teachers uh, and, uh, and that's why, you know, I'm here to provide resources that are already linked that are already there so that you don't have to look for things. So, but yeah, for sure, if you watch a movie and then you just decide which day to talk about it, then just go with the flow and, uh, and uh, it's not difficult yet. So I hope, I hope some of you will do this. 
and you don't have to ask anyone for money. So who will do that in, in your schools? Sorry, say again, I didn't hear well. It was a, a question for the teachers. If some of the teachers plan to, to do this activity at school. I see many yes. Well, well probably, yes, probably uh, I'll try to do that also with the help of other teachers. For example, as Nella said before, since we are not the science teachers, something could be more difficult for us. But all these activities, uh, yes, they are also at our level, I suppose. But if some of our science teachers would like to help us, uh, this would be great, uh, especially because, as uh, Jackie said, they they did they do not cost anything. They do not cost a pound, and so uh, a euro, and so um, this uh, will really help uh, uh, to spread the the idea that uh, we have to save our soil, because uh, as uh, Nina said uh, in the very last uh, slide. Uh, helping the soil will uh, uh, saving the soil will help to save us. So um, we have to work on teenagers in order to raise awareness that uh, um, their future is in danger. So yes, we'll try. I think uh, uh, I'm. Uh, um, I would like. I would really like to try those experiences, even though at school especially here in Italy, it is not so easy. We are always facing some administrative problems, some related to, uh, I don't know, uh, privacy or uh, permissions that, that we as teachers should have or uh, students uh, the same should have, but we'll try, <laughs> okay? Thank you, Nina. Thank you. And uh, we in Larissa, in uh, 16th uh, Dimotico, we're going to make um, a small garden. And um, today I am thinking, uh, uh, after all of uh, all uh, this uh, we watched, uh, to uh, make um, a part of it with sand to show the difference of uh, organic uh, land. Very nice, Evangelion, so nice. Actually, yeah, there was one of the experiments we had, or hands-on activity, no, call for action of the, the educational path was to, to establish a school garden. So the kids would uh, start to understand also how it works, like to Plants stuff, uh, and also take responsibility on taking care of it. So yeah, that, that's very nice. And it's also nice to see how it should uh, the, the the organic matter and sands are different, and how things are really you know like they they all both the same, but there is life in one, and there it's the other one is like this. So that's very I was, nice. I was just looking really forward to it. I was thinking that uh, normally uh, sometimes there is uh, kids ask, you know, um, yeah, but uh, in the sand, in the desert, there are still plants. Um, uh, so it's not true that um, the sandy land is, um, is not alive. Uh, so you just have to make them understand that the amount of food that is needed to provide, to, to feed the, a population that is growing uh, in the next year is growing uh, it, it has to be really really rich and fertile so obviously the desert even if they will see a plant sprouting out of their sand pot this is not going to be enough to feed the, the world so they need to understand the difference obviously there are some organic substances even in sand even in clay so there will be plants who are adapted to grow there but that's not going to be enough to feed everyone on the planet. And uh, one thing I want to say, because um, 
uh, Josepina, yes, that's something that about um, they need to, the kids need to understand that their future is in danger. Yes, but uh, just uh, we have to be careful to uh, not to increase their um, anxiety about um, global change because some of them are really anxious. Um, maybe more in the UK, maybe less in Italy, I don't know, but uh, the, this is called uh, eco anxiety. It has a name already. So we need to be careful how we talk about uh, this subject. They need to understand that this is an important subject, an urgent subject. But we need to focus our attention and their attention on the solution because this is also a solution, the possible solution. So if we just love a little bit this soil a bit more, so if they just put their hands on this soil, then this will be coming uh, more easily without really thinking about it. Okay, so uh, thank you. Thank you a lot, uh, Nina, for also raising awareness on uh, how to communicate this uh, important topic. This is something that we foreseen in our uh, project because we want to uh, go from civic to civi uh, citizenship. So it will be very important for us to increase uh, our uh, our t uh, methodologies and a way to learn to teach. And uh, I don't know if uh, we don't have uh, any other questions. Uh, I remember to our partner that the, the presentation, the video will, will be uploaded uh, both on the YouTube and on the e-learning platform. And then a follow-up email will, uh, will uh, come soon.